Frederik, herzlich willkommen. Um, well, thank you for this introduction, Michael. You make me uh, humble and uh, really nervous. Um, yes, I'm, uh, I'm Frederick, I'm an information designer, and I want to show you some of my uh, projects, and especially the uh, Netherlands from above. Um, I saw a lot of information, of our um, art directors and um, designers over here. How many is or f find himself a, a um, designer? Not an information designer or an infographic artist, but who is just a designer? Yeah, yeah, right. Then um, I have this, this slide for you because this is exactly what also uh, Nigel showed about white space. And I think white space is also a lot of information. For instance, with this infographic that I made for the magazine, it's about interest rates countries have to pay for their debts. So over here, you have the country like Japan. Uh, it has a lot of debts, but their interest rate they have to pay is uh, quite low. A uh, bit like the United States, large economy, but they um, have um, um, the, the, uh, the uh, half of their debts than uh, compared to Japan. And out there, you have Greece. We all know Greece. Huge debts, uh, but also huge interest rates. So I made this uh, infographic. And the first thing that the art director asks, well, it's a lot of blank space. We should add a picture. <laughs> and that's why I hope when we have about, we'll talk about the future of infographics, uh, it's about editorial design. And I think infographics is the pinnacle of uh, editorial design. It's, it's not about a box where you do an infographic. No, you think really, really, really um, about what you're doing with space and what it, what it means. And that's why I don't get along very good with art directors all, all the time, because they ask these sometimes silly things. Um, Short introdu introduction about the Netherlands. Um, this is our country, the Low Countries, and we measure everything. We are a small country, so it's not that difficult. And you see the dark spots are the areas that are getting lower. So we are Low Countries and we keep getting lower. We also have uh, regions where, we, where the, the soil is lifted. That's down south, but we don't care that much because it's, it's, uh, there are a lot of hills over there. Um, but you see, these are centimeters, and we are really meticulous on measuring these uh, areas. And all this uh, sinking soil is caused by the fact that we are pulling gas out of the uh, ground. Uh, so we are having a, a big problems over there right now. Um, Despite all this, uh, we all, a majority of people, are still living under sea level. To give you an idea, um, the blue areas are the percentage of people living below sea level, and the green areas is just above. So you see, for the major uh, province of the Netherlands, South Holland, um, a lot of people are living down sea level. And you would think, you got to move. No, we don't, because uh, the forecast for 2040 is that an increasing amount of people is moving to areas even lower. So, well, that's another problem for the future. Um, well, so that's very, 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 uh, another sad story about our demographic pyramids. Uh, you all know the pyramids. Um, with the population pyramid, and um, that's, that's an average, because we have shrinking areas and we have large cities. And when we compare large cities with shrinking areas, um, you see the differences, like the large cities on this side, um, they have a bottom line of, of youngest but um, a quite steady group of 30, 40 years old people, like the shrinking areas, have more elderly people. And that's something that's going to evolve even more in the future. Uh, this is a kind of a heat map scaled in 3D to see how that uh, changes over time. 
And you see that thanks to the universities and schools in the large cities, there is a steady grow of younger people, while the shrinking areas um, in the region, mostly agricultural, uh, people are getting old and are staying there. And this wasn't a quite easy graphic to do. Um, so I thought, well, let's print it in 3D. And this is a 3D printed model of the Netherlands. You can feel, you can touch, and you can see our rural areas and our big four cities, and you see uh, how it was in the 1980s, but also in the future. So that's the fun thing about data visualization. You can print it. Um, one of the last slides about counting people. This is our people using their mobile or cell phone on the busiest time of the day. That's about 5.30 in the evening, uh, because then we all call, we're getting home for dinner. We eat very early in the evening in the Netherlands. Um, what's also very typical for the Netherlands is the time we're uh, calling. Uh, at 3.25 early in the morning, are, there are just about 48,000 people on the phone. Uh, then we have lunch, a lot more people on the phone. Uh, but then we have a dip around 8 o'clock, because obviously we all watch the television news. Um, and then there was a very interesting spot that was at 8.30 in the morning, uh, every Monday, and the telephone company didn't understand what the problem was. They even called competitors to ask, why are there so many errors? And it was because too many people were calling the general practitioner because after the weekend they were sick and they had to call the doctor at 8 in the morning. So that's the Netherlands. Um, we also count our terrorists. Uh, this is a uh, talk I did last week of last year for uh, uh, magazines. Uh, we have about 126. I think one died uh, since then. And uh, of course, we have different types of categories of uh, jihadists, like um, the recruiters. And uh, we had all kinds of uh, types, because we had also the ones that were being uh, on a watch list. Uh, we counted also them. Uh, the one with um, uh, we were planning an attack. Uh, of course, the families going to Syria, big problem in the Netherlands on their way. Uh, the terrorists actually being in Syria to fight. Uh, the one who are doing a suicide bomb attack, uh, well, these are the least less dangerous because they are dead. Um, but the problems in the Netherlands are the ones who are returning back to the Netherlands and are crazy as hell. Uh, but at least we're counting them, so we know where they are. Um, this one is, is from uh, the Netherlands from above, the uh, animation. Um, we did about trekking flowers. See, this is a, um, a, a boat, and I see the subtitle missing, but this is a boat leaving Equator and going to the Netherlands. Meanwhile, in Kenya, there's a truck uh, leaving with another uh, type of flowers, uh, red roses, I believe, and then while it's on the plane to Netherlands, there's one uh, leaving by truck, uh, to the Netherlands, and they will all be combined in uh, our country where we have these huge auction halls um, and will be uh, combined all together into a bouquet. And I'm really bad in, pl in, in flowers and anything of plants, so it's really bad that there is no subtitles, otherwise I would uh, tell you it were, uh, what kind of flowers it was. And the reason why I choose this one is because um, all these different flowers for all different countries are combined into one bouquet, and then they're heading to Germany, to a city close by. Uh, I believe there was... Uh, well, I don't even... I'm going to try it. At the end of the presentation, I have a download link, and you can watch uh, the good one. And here is the bouquet from Holland, we say, but, and that is in Rhine, um, which is close by Munich, I believe. So, isn't it? Uh, for, well, more or less. Well, everything is close over here. <laughs> um, so, that's my professional work, but also when I'm doing um, 
uh, in my spare time. Uh, I make infographics because it came out handy. Uh, this is one. This is our car, and I showed it um, uh, on the last presentation. Uh, this is our car when we drove back from uh, Paris from a holiday with the children, and um, we smashed, and our telephone broke down. But I was able to take a lot of pictures and film because. The, um, you all know that when you're making a visualization, you need research and data. And here I was in the ability to collect my own information. Well, it was so um, on a newsroom, it, it's really hard to collect your data. Um, so here was the result of an infographic I showed to friends and family because they couldn't reach us because our cell phone was uh, smashed between the windshield and the asphalt. Um, so um, I sent this to the uh, insurance company, and uh, they said, uh, well, thank you very much. Never seen such visualizations uh, like this. <laughs> and I, I, I hope that it would have uh, speed up the process. Uh, instead of that, they said, no, well, um, apparently you also hit another car, um, w which makes the uh, situation uh, uh, even more difficult. Apparently, something broke down from the car and hit another car on the other side of the road. Um, so this is uh, the update version. Um, so infographics doesn't help you all the time. Um, so th th this is my uh, story about um, uh, data exploration to animation. And just like my previous speaker said and Nigel also said, it's, it's, you have to provide context and you need to edit uh, your data. Um, when I was asked to join the team of uh, Netherlands from above um, and was saying, well, I will be um, uh, making animation for Netherlands from above, everyone said, well, cool, you're going to be on a helicopter shot and, and you will be seeing the country from above. Well, unfortunately, I haven't been on the helicopter uh, any moment uh, and I don't mind at all because I did see the tracks of the helicopter. This is, for instance, our helicopter flying above Amsterdam, and it makes you sick. And especially when you see, we had a great camera which was stabilized all the time, uh, but when you're in the helicopter, you really get noxious. And, um, well, that gives you an idea how awful it was indeed. Um, so I was not in a helicopter, I was just playing around with data. Uh, I had to uh, call people and beg an organization to give me data and then analyze and, and edit and, and make selections and um, perhaps combine also because there are always uh, well, errors or strange things happening with the data. Uh, finding visual visualization techniques to uh, find the best way to represent the data and then write storyboards. Uh, that's a fun part because then you're, well, making drawings and um, writing the text. And then the, 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 the final phase, it was the animation. And then uh, we had a fabulous animation team in England. Uh, they work a lot of for National Geographic and BBC. And they always make wonderful things. So whatever garbage you send out to them, it always looks good. But in the end, it's of course about the story. You have to get your story right. And getting the data is, uh, for a journalist is, is awful. Um, well, I started here because um, this is where I begin. Um, and this is the guy I need, is the data specialist from an organi for, 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 organization. Um, but my first phone call has always to be uh, to the press officer. And the press officer uh, almost never understands your question. Uh, you, tr you might try to explain you need Excel sheets or database dumps or whatsoever. And then they will still ask you, so you don't need an interview with our director? No, totally not. Um, but then sales and marketing want to say something. You have to do, um, you have legal issues you have to try to solve. Um, and then there is a board of directors. Uh, we might not want to have an interview, but they still want to say something um, or explain, or at least want to be involved in the project. And then you're with the IT guys uh, who can provide you this kind of data dump. And this is, for instance, one day of traffic um, 
vessels around the port of Rotterdam. Just one day, about 12 million of records, but there is garbage in it because there is one column of with destination file with destination cities like Ghent or Gdansk, uh, but it's also sometimes not applicable or not available. Um, don't have a clue or none of your business. Um, home, yes. Um, anywhere where water is, so so you you have captains who are really uh, sense of, have a sense of humor. On my way from A to B, guess viable, uh, far far away. And Pirate Bay, yeah, yeah. That's a so that's garbage. You have to edit or delete it. Uh, but of course, there are GPS locations, and um, I asked this data set, for instance, because the port authorities told me they had to monitor the roundabout on the North Sea. So I thought, well, roundabout, that's something you cannot see from the helicopter. You might need data to visualize that. And well, the roundabout look more like a triangle, not really a round, um, but it, it might work. So we started to animate this data, and it, 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 it looks all right, uh, but it's a bit, bit boring because nothing happens. And then you need an actor, uh, just like a movie. You, you, you need a principal person um, who can guide you to the story. And in this case, it was a boat. Uh, we follow that boat with a helicopter, how it enters the harbor and all the bridges, five minutes already, yes. Um, so this is the footage we did um, with all the, uh, uh, the footage uh, we broadcasted with the animation. In deze aflevering van Nederland van Boven, de hongerige muil van Europa. 500 miljoen consumenten van Breda tot Berlijn en van Praag tot Wenen die iedere dag stipt op tijd koffie uit Brazilië, spijkerbroeken uit Amerika en computers uit China willen hebben. Hoe hebben we het nadeel van een moerassige delta omgetoverd in een voordeel? Waarbij onze havens en ons transport een precisie uurwerk zijn geworden. Zaterdag 5 maart 2011. Het Oranje Puntje is een containerschip op weg naar zijn eindbestemming, de Waalhaven van Rotterdam. Een snelweg van schepen volgeladen met containers, olie, auto's. De flikkerende puntjes zijn wachtende boten. Hoek van Holland. Hier gaan iedere dag opnieuw 150 schepen de nieuwe waterweg op. De groene punten zijn baggerschepen die de vaargul permanent uitdiepen en de tweede maasvlakte van zand voorzien. Eenmaal in de haven wordt ieder schip onderdeel van een nog veel grotere machinerie. Dit is het kloppend hart van wat ooit die moerassige delta was. Uh, in every big data animation to find the little data, because the little data was sometimes, or in most cases, the most interesting. But when you're doing data research, you also have to um, uh, be surprised when you get something you don't need or you don't want it uh, primarily. So, for instance, I needed imagery uh, for the Netherlands, satellite imagery or airplane imagery, so I can have a background for all animations. Um, so finally, I got a hard drive with um, a pixel for every tile of 20 by 20 centimeters. So it's a huge um, uh, set of, of imageries for covering the whole of the Netherlands. Um, and when I was looking through the folders, I also something found um, tracks. And um, I thought, well, th th that might be interesting. And it, it was looked just like a knitting pattern. And in fact, these were the tracks of the airplanes uh, monitoring our country. And that, well, this is so much fun because that's actually how we are making or how we are scanning our, um, our country. And to finish um, this presentation, I have a compilation of the, all the animation we, um, uh, we did for the uh, first season. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much. What? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.